And it touched God by that. And they didn't hear that. I realized that. They didn't hear it. But my dad is not going to make it. So the other day, as I was preparing this gospel, have you shared this good, good thing? That your dad said to you? I said, no. I've never shared the good things with my dad. You see, I'm going to be honest with you. As I got to looking, here's the bad things and here's the good things, but as I got to looking at the, the, the good things, this is what happened. <laughs> there was no bad thing. And a good thing for my dad did, I just want to share this with you as, as a testimony. When I was a kid growing up, the biggest thing that I remember my dad did, I never missed church. Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Sunday night, revival, I was in church all the time. I was, I was in church all the time. But as a kid growing up, my dad would always make sure that I had some. I never forget. I had a first cousin that was showing up. Showing Jersey Cow in 4-H. I was real young and I, I wanted to go into 4-H. And my dad went and rented this farm just to put one Jersey Cow on. One Jersey Cow he rented this farm. I don't know what the rent was. I have no idea. But I know he didn't have the money for it. But yet he still does it. At the time I turned 16 years old, I was showing seven or eight Jersey Cows and showing all over the state of Kentucky. <coughs> And my dad was there with me every time. He never missed a, a show. He never missed a time to help me work these cows and do everything. And then as I got older, got playing Little League. My dad was there every game that I played. And I never would get the last year that I was going to play. The coach had retired that winter. He wasn't going to coach us our last year, my last year. My dad stepped in and took over the coaching job just so that we could still have that game. And by God's grace, we won the tournament that year. We did. And my, and my dad and some other dads got together and rented a bus and took us. And this is nothing for y'all now if you can do anything you want nowadays. But back then, this was big. He rented a bus and took us to Cincinnati to watch the Cincinnati Reds. That was a thrill back then. That was a thrill to go all the way to Cincinnati to watch Cincinnati Reds play ball. And I never would forget this Christmas. Six months before Christmas, back in the summer part, I was in school and I was working with my dad. I had turned 16. My birthday was in November, so I turned 16. But anyway, we was working and my dad pulled up to this place of business, which we've been there before. He said, Come on, son, come on in. I got to go talk to this guy. And I walked in. He was talking to this man about business. And when we walked out the door, I looked over there and they said this little blue suit of thing. And my dad said, That's a cute little car. I left there before that, but I knew a suit. He said, Well, maybe keep working hard, keep doing it, and maybe one day you get that car. I do my market. I said, Yeah. So Christmas comes. Christmas born, and my sister. Mom and dad sat around the tree and had all kinds of presents. When my sister started opening her package, she, my mom started handing her all the presents. And I'm still sitting there waiting for one. I haven't got it yet. <laughs> I said, I thought I'd be a bad boy or something. This <laughs> but anyway, I finally got one package. Got one present. I opened it up. Sure enough, there was some clothes in there. Which back then, I didn't care much about clothes. <laughs> anyway, I didn't think more about it. I hadn't thought anything. I said, well, you know, kind of depressed. I know they probably thought I was out. Anyway, my dad told me, he said, son, I forgot your prison. It's out there in the truck seat. I 
best friend. Cost $300 back then. $300 back then, my dad was a lot of money. And what, what touched me more than that 69 Mustang is when I was working the side of the men. A few months later, they worked with my dad. And he, he said this out jokingly. He said, I hope you're enjoying that car. And I said, yeah, why? He said, for, a, for a, a, over a week to two weeks, we worked out in the cold because your dad didn't have the money to buy that car. And he had to finish this job to get that free in the box. See, that did more to me than that car. And the last thing I'm going to share about my dad is the most important thing. See, my mother got killed in 85 in a car wreck. My dad was messed up really bad. Did you think he was going to live? We God had different ideas there. I question God. I why he took my mother and left my dad. Because my mother was a Christian. She loved the Lord. She loved everything. That a, that a mother could do. She put God first in her life. And he told me one morning I woke up. He said, John, your dad wasn't friendly. Because I took him and been to hell. He wasn't saved yet. He knew Jesus. He, he made sure that we was in church. He knew who God was. He knew who Jesus was. But he didn't have the relationship. Listen to me, man. He did not have a relationship. That we're supposed to have with Jesus. So God left him there. And I thank God for all that happened. I look back and I thank God for it. even my mother get killed going to heaven. I thank God for that because she's not in a, in a rubble place now. She's in a better place. And I thank God that he didn't take my dad in because my dad got saved later. He accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. He knew who Jesus was. He had a relationship with him at the very end of his age. And I thank God for that. But the, the thing I remember, the last thing I remember was one day I was walking into the, the new of the hospital of nurse on my hand number. And I heard Daddy talk to this nurse. And he said, you know, I want he was talking about me. Sometimes they know if you're good or bad, but it's not really good. But he was talking about me, and he was telling the, telling the stars, he said, the thing that, that we missed when my son left, so he'd been talking to her for a while, I don't know what all he told her, but I did hear this part. He said, my son, when he got married and left the house, the thing that, that me and his mother missed more than anything, is my son reading the Bible every night before he went to bed. I'm not bragging on what I did. I'm bragging on what my dad and my mom raised me to do. And I was reading my Bible every, every night before I went to bed. And I never did miss that. Never missed that. And my dad told that nurse, he said, he loves the Lord so much. He still reads the Bible. He sings a lot. That's why I believe in Jesus. He sings a lot. And he preaches every once in a while. And, I, and that's, that's my last memory of, of my dad. And that's the only memory that I need. Happy Father's Day to me, guys. I just want to say that I love you. And uh, I love God is, is number one in my life. I can say that. He's number one in my life over my kids, over my wife, over you all, over my pastor. He's number one. And he always will be. So as I was preparing this message for you all, God gave me seven different men in the, in the Bible that he wanted to share to you all about. Seven days. It's in this Bible. And God, it's so amazing, Pastor. It's so amazing. And I know you'll say the same thing. It's so amazing how God puts everything in order. Because what is the number seven? It's perfect. It's God's number. It's the best number that you can ever come up with. And I'm starting at the beginning 
of Genesis. And I'm going to admit to the end of Revelation. <laughs> now, the pastor always says it won't take up one four hours. Adam 
was the one that sinned. Because of Adam's sin, Cain had a jealous spirit. How did he get a jealous spirit? Well, it be a perfect world because of sin. Be careful. Listen to me. Be careful, Dad, what you do in your life with your family. You might, and I'm going to show you in David, we get to David, the more of this. Be careful how you raise your children. Make sure, Dad, that your children see you praying. Make sure your children see you take, treat your wife with respect. Make sure your children, you know, I, I said this not too long ago when I was preaching on video. If I lined every little kid up right here, and my first question is, what does your dad do? Some of you would probably leave the room before they would answer. I know in my past, I probably would. Little kids will not lie. I remember my wife coming in, she taught the kindergarten, the first grade. I remember her coming in and telling me one time that this one little kid said, we're going to, he was so excited, he said, we're going to go see my dad. He said, dad. They don't, they don't keep nothing from you. They tell you. They don't know no better, Pastor. They tell the truth. And we sometimes want to lie. We sometimes want to not tell the truth. Be careful. Sin. There's consequences. In sin. From the very beginning of Adam and Eve. Second, Daddy Noah. A righteous man. How many of you here, anybody in here feel righteous? I don't think we all, we all want to humble ourselves and do what God tells us to do. But if we get to the point, you know, are we really righteous? You think about that just a minute. What's righteous mean? I'm going to tell you what I think righteous means. It, it, it means that your heart is truly, truly for God. That everything you think about, everything you do, is He comes first in your life. That's what a righteous man is. It's when God tells you to do something and you do it automatically without asking questions. You do it automatically without going to ask your wife. You do it automatically without going to ask a lawyer or somebody. If God's called you to do something, you automatically do it. And when there's things that's going to make fun of you, people's going to laugh at you, people's going to talk about you, and you still do it, you become a righteous man. You become a righteous man. Look what Noah says in Genesis 6, 8, 8, 10. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Have you all found favor in God's eyes? Huh? Well, listen to me. If you found favor in God's eyes, then you become a righteous man. That's the very really beginning of it. This is the account of Noah and his family. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. And he walked, this is the big one here, you all. Everybody look at this. He walked faithfully with God. Noah had three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Listen to me. The three boys that he had, listen to me, Dad, listen to me real close. The three young boys that he had respected their father. They respected their earthly dad. And by respecting their earthly dad, because their, their dad respected the main father. They did, they respected the main father. How many of us right now listen to our parents? Uh, listen to me. How many of us praise God? Praise God. That is a blessing. God will bless you. If you truly listen to your parents, if your parents is, is a Christian parent, they love the Lord, and they and, and they put God first in their life, please listen to them. Even when you don't think it's right, even if you don't think that what they're telling you is, is, is going to do good for you, if they're listening to God, I promise you, it might not happen right yet, but it's going to be the best thing that will happen to you if you grow old. It is. No, listen to God. I want you to picture this just a minute. Here was a big ship that, that God told you to build on dry land or dry land. Think about that. Man. Has God told you to do something that it, it seems impossible? Is there anybody here right now that God told you to do something and it seems impossible? You want the first thing you want to think of God, it won't work. God, there's no way that's going to happen. No one's ever did say that. What did Noah do? He started getting the wood together. He started doing the work that God called him to do. He never questioned God. How many of us have questioned God? 
Yes. I'm, I'm glad because I had to raise my hand when I was preparing this. Well, God, I think somebody else can do it better. Have you ever done that, Pastor? I think somebody else can do it better. God didn't call someone else. He called you. He called you. He knows your heart. Everybody's sitting here right now. He knows your heart. I can hide my heart from my wife. She, a lot of times she checks me out, though, but I still can hide it. She can hide her heart from me, but I'm going to tell you right now, you cannot hide your heart from God. It will not work. He knows everything about you. Everything. Be careful. He knew Noah was a righteous man. He knew that he could count on Noah to build a ship. And he knew that his three boys was just like Noah. They were respectful to his, their dad and respected God. And the thing I love about Noah more than the ship that every day passed him, every day he preached to the people out there, begging them, begging them to repent and turn from the way. He begged them. Even though he built this ship, even though they laughed at him, even though they mocked him, even though they did things bad about him, and the, his family was put down, was made fun of, he still kept his eyes on God and still preached the word and still built the word. Amen. A righteous man. Three, Abraham. I, I, just, I could preach all day long on Abraham. I could. I just love the, the story of Abraham. Let's read it. I get into it. Genesis 22, 1 through 2 says, Sometimes later, God said to Abraham, He said to him, Abraham, here I am. He replied, Then God said, Take your son, look at this now, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Mora. Sacrifice him there and burn offering on a mountain, I will show you. Now I want you to think of this picture. I know all of you know the story about Abraham, but he was a hundred years old before he had a child. And now God wanted to take his only son? I'm serious, Charles. He gives him a son. It takes him a hundred years to get Isaac. It takes him a hundred years to, to, to listen to what God. But let me tell you, the whole time, from the point of the time God promised Abraham to he got his son, he listened to God. Did he mess up? Yes, he messed up. But he never took his eyes off of God. He listened to everybody, everything that God told him to do. Now the test comes, Chris. Anybody in here had a test? Has God put anybody through a test? Huh? Every one of us sitting here, if you're a Christian, you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. God has tested you. He will not test you, but he has tested you. Men, you're getting tested right now. Every one of us sitting here as daddies can say, we're getting tested right now. Are we truly being the man of God that our children see? Are we truly being the man of God that our wives see? Are we truly being the man of God that God has found? Think about that. Abraham. Didn't he say, God, I cannot give up my son. You just gave him to me. I cannot. I, I took me a hundred years to get him. I love him with all my heart. I cannot give him up. No. He didn't say that, Pastor. What did he do? He loaded him up on the donkey. He killed the wood. He got everything he needed. He went up there. And he told the servant who went with him. We're going on up higher on the mountain. And they went on up there. And, and the son of Isaac asked, asked his dad. I, I, love, I love Isaac too. Listen to me. You can cheer here. He can cheer. Listen to me. He never got mad at his dad for doing what he did. He said to his dad, where's the sacrifice? What did Abraham tell him? God will provide. God will provide. That's how much trust Abraham had. And he took Isaac and put him on a pile of wood and tied him. How far did he go? He went all the way up with the Michael to kill his son. And the angel stopped and said, he got a ram over there. Your test that God puts you through, you passed. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. See, listen to me, I am not there. I want to be there, Pastor. 
I want to be, I want to be that much faith and that much trust in God that I can be like Abraham. But I'm not there. See, I couldn't give up one of my kids right now. I couldn't. But I want to get to the point, to the place where Jesus blows that horn, where that horn blows, and Jesus comes back. I want to get to the place that my daily walk is with Him, and I focus on doing every single thing that the Father tells me to do. I want to get to that place. I want to, Pastor. I really do. I want to get to that place that whatever He asks me, whatever He tells me, wherever He puts me, I want to be obedient to do what God tells me to do. And that's what we need to do, church, because Jesus is coming back soon. I'm just, it's just, it's going to happen, and I can't wait. Oh, I can spend all day on Moses. Moses had two sons. Let's read about Moses. Exodus 3, 2 through 6 says, There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire. I love that, man. From within a bush. Moses thought that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see the strange sight. Why the bush would not burn up? When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses says, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your family. For the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Abraham. And this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. We've got a heavenly father that loves us so much. He is the God of all. There's nothing no better. Be God Almighty. Amen. Our heavenly Father. There's nothing no better. Now I want you to think about what Moses did. See, Moses did have the, the two sons. But really, Moses had a bunch of kids. Because God gave him, he, he argued with God. He pleaded with God. He begged God not to give him like we do sometimes. There's somebody else out there to do it better. But God called Moses to do it. And finally, Moses agreed to do it, finally. But the thing that Moses did, he took the Israelites out of bondage through God. But he is the daddy of all of them. That's the way I felt, Pastor. They looked upon him as their leader, as their father, as someone that loved them and took care of them. But even as us dads, we, we do the same thing. We try to do right with our family. We try to do good. But guess what happens? We're just about like those... Those ones that he had, we start looking at things that's not right. I think some of you right now are just thinking about maybe the things I just looked at this past week that I should have looked at on that video screen. Getting off quiet with you. Maybe, maybe you, you took a little drink that nobody else knew but you and God. Maybe you just smoked a little joint that only you and God do. You know, I'm hoping not anybody in this church is out of the way, but maybe somebody on Facebook. Is hearing me right now. It's for somebody that I didn't plan to say to it. Maybe you've done something that you shouldn't have done. And you're kind of like them. You're slipping away. And Moses goes to the top of the hill to be with God to get the Ten Commandments. And while he was gone, the ones that there was having a part of that, but it was worse than other gods. They forgot about who Moses taught them about, the main God, the only God. They forgot about that. Have we done that in our life before? Huh, every one of us stand here, yeah. We have slipped away from God before, every one of us. Maybe not entirely, but something's caught our eye that we shouldn't have looked at. Something that's got our eye that we shouldn't have done. Maybe something that's said or we tried something that we shouldn't have tried. But God has promised to me if I truly do him, he would never let me go. He would love me to stand me out of hand. But I'm going to tell you, there's consequences in sin. So when Moses come down that hill with the, with the Ten Commandments, they was partying and finally Moses told them, if you're going to follow my God, come over here by me. And if you're not, stay there. And guess what? The ones that stayed there had consequences because they all died in the hell. They all fell in the, opened up the ground and they were sent. Moses had a powerful job ahead of him. Take care of it. It's something that Moses never got to do is go into the promised land. See, God tells us we're going to do things and we might do them, but we might not make it as far as we want to go. We, we're going to make it as far as God wants to go. And thank God that we can go that far. 
Amen. Number five, King David. Oh, I love this one. Man, I, I think this is probably one of my favorites to talk about. I think about King David when he was a little young boy. Everybody remember the story of, of uh, Goliath? Huh? What did King David did? Yeah, my grandson back there. He's got to stand up. He knows. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> you know what King David did when, as, a, as a kid? He respected and honored God as a young child. He did. That's where it all started at. He didn't have fear of nothing on him because he knew that his God, his heavenly Father, was going to take care of him. And that's the reason he went to Goliath and killed him. When all the big other brothers couldn't do it. When nobody else was brave enough to do it. There's another thing in your life. Are you brave enough? How many of you have more fear upon you about what's happening in the world than you do what God can do in the world? Huh? There's so much fear running around you right now. It's, it's kind of pathetic. It's kind of sad. And I know all this stuff's going around and we got to take care of ourselves. we got to watch things. But listen to me. How many of you are getting on your knees every night and asking God to heal this land? I know of four people in this church. Now, I'm Two, one of them is my wife's pet one, and the other one is the pastor and his wife. I know. And I hope and pray that more of you here is doing that. Because if you don't do what the Word says, don't think you're going to get what's coming to you from God. Because He will not honor anything that you don't do right. Pastor always tells you, how many of you don't want your blessing? He says, I will take it. Well, if you're not doing what the Word says, guess what? Give them to me, but I'm going to take them. You've got to be obedient to do what the Word says. From the Genesis all the way to Revelation, there's no part left out. Amen. you got to do everything. You know, I, I was kind of talking to someone this morning. There's different men in this Bible that I'm naming right now. And we're going to talk about King David in just a minute. But there's different men in this Bible that wrote the Bible. But every man that wrote in this word of God was inspired by God. Nobody else. I couldn't preach today without God being born. Everybody in this Bible is inspired by God. This holy Bible, this Bible I'm holding up right now, is inspired by God. Everything written in it was written from God. And he didn't write this just to leave it sitting right there on your table and put it up. He wrote it for your, for your benefit, for you. That you would get up and do what God told you to do through His Word. And if you're not doing it, then there's consequences. Let's read about David. 2 Samuel 12, 13 through 14 says, Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan replied, Listen, don't you look this, you all. The Lord has taken away your sin. How many know that Jesus died and took away your sin? Huh? Huh? Yeah. 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 I don't care what kind of thing. I don't, I don't even want to know what you did. It's not my business. But I know if you truly repent and give it to God, you can take it away. Yeah. Jesus wasn't here yet. Let's read this. The Lord takes away your sin. You are not going to die. Praise God, huh? Amen. So, let's stop there. So, his sin, what he did, it's going to take away. There's no problem, right? Huh? There's no problem? Yes, it is a problem. It's going to be a big problem. Sin has consequences. I don't care what kind of sin you did. God will forgive you. But the sin that you did is going to have consequences. It's going to cause things to happen. It's going to be things in your life. There's going to be consequences. This is, this is the consequence right here. I didn't write it, God wrote it. But, Pastor, that big but. But, because by doing this, you have shown other contempt for the Lord. The Son born to you will what? Die. What does that do? He starts fasting. He starts just laying on his face, crying out to God, asking God not to take the son. He's begging not to take the son. Listen to me. There's consequences of sin. I told you at the very beginning, when Adam and Eve, there's consequences of sin. 
Adam might have sinned and, and nothing was going to happen, but it did. Even though he had the weeds to take care of, he still lost his son. If you think about this, this is the first daddy that ever lost a son. He was the first daddy to ever have a son. He was the first daddy to ever lost a son. Consequences. David tried everything he could to pass him. Not to lose his child. Let me tell you something. You might have lost a child, you might have lost a parent, you might have lost a spouse. But if they truly know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and I, I can already tell you once I know that he's lost, they know where they're at. I wouldn't want them back. Give God a hand where they're at. We don't be like that when we get to the third block. Y'all lost my dad 10 years ago. I'm going to be able to see him real soon. Every one of them sitting here, we're going to be able to see him. Our family members are coming real soon. They're in a better place. My question to you today, before I get any further, are you ready? Amen. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? That's my question. Do you really know Jesus? Do you really have that relationship? You might know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but do you have that relationship that you need with Him? That's what it takes. You've got to have that relationship. His sin. His sin. Because His Son died. His sin. Now listen, Jesus Christ comes and took care of all that. All of this, this is all this. The new test, the new covenant. Jesus comes and took care of all that. But there's one thing he says will still happen. There's still consequences in your sin. I don't care what you do wrong or what you mess up. There's still going to be consequences in your sin. Oh, if he's good, he's good at passing. Joseph, earthly father of Jesus. You ever thought about that while we did? Jesus had to have an earthly father. Even though the Holy Spirit brought Jesus in to live here with us, he was conceived by the Holy Spirit. He still had to have an earthly father. You know, I've got two young grandkids back there. They're not blood kin, but they're my blood kids. Because I do not look at them no different than my other kids that my kids have had. I don't. I, I, matter of fact, I, I love them all the same. I, I love them all just like they were all born through my, my daughter. As far as I'm concerned, they were. They were. Joseph had to adopt Jesus. But there's one part of here I don't think we ever really look at. We're going to read here just a minute. It says, this is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pleased to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her twice. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as you want. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. I want you to look at this right here. It's something you don't think about. And you, Joseph, are to give him the name Jesus. Praise God. Listen, there's no other name. There's no other name more powerful than that of Jesus. There's no other name that you can name to Jesus. There's no other name that can do you better than the name of Jesus. There's no other name that can heal you than the name of Jesus. There's no other name that can save you than the name of Jesus. Listen to me. To be a daddy, to be a daddy, to be able to name the Lord God Almighty, His Son, Jesus Christ, to be able to give Him the name, that would be more powerful than anything in the world at that particular time. Amen? To be able to name your son Jesus, B.J., to be able to name the son of God, Jesus. Oh, I mean, I've never oh. thought about it, Pastor, until the other night. That is the most powerful. Listen to me. Joseph, you don't hear a lot about Joseph, but listen to me. As far as I'm concerned, he was a good daddy. Amen. He was a good daddy. Don't my father in heaven was gave him to be the father of Jesus, the earthly father. Amen. He loved Joseph. 
He took care of it. Joseph didn't want to be known who big Joseph, the power of the eye of No. He was just the earthly father that, that adopted the Holy Spirit. That's what I thought, the Holy Spirit. He adopted the Holy Spirit of Jesus. And I thought, wow, what better, what better can he get to be able to name and, and to raise your son, God Almighty, to raise God, he knew he raised God us as a child of us. That he was old enough of a preacher that was a young age. Because he will save his people from their sins. Woo! It don't get no better than that. It don't get no better than that. But guess what? It does. It does. Number seven. I told you number seven was perfect. Thank you, Pastor. Number seven is perfect. This is what it is. From Genesis 1 to Revelation 22, 21, all the scripture was read or put in the name of God. All the scripture that was gave in this word was from our Father up in heaven. Every day. My challenge to you men today is to go at your house. And if you don't have one, let me know. We've got some here. Go to your house. Open it up every day. Spend five minutes. Spend five minutes in God's Word. Let your family see that this is more important than going to work. This is more important than going to play with the kids right now. This is more important than going out to eat somewhere. This is going to come first because this is God's Word. And that's why it comes first. So stop reading it each and every day of your life. Make a habit. I don't really preach on doing habits. But this one has it on to, to preach on. Make this a habit to get in your word every day. Make it a habit, listen, family, make it a habit to do a devotion together. Make me and my wife would read every morning. We got devotions we read every morning. Matter of fact, we got three of them. We read I'm not, I'm not bragging on this, I'm just saying it it grew us closer together. If you want to get closer together as a family, put God at the head of it. And do everything you have to do. Do everything you have to do. I don't know if all this has touched you. I hope and pray it has. It touched me. But the biggest thing that touched me more than that is this video clip that I'm getting ready to show you. <clears throat> I'm asking you all to just, just to take this in your heart. I want you to think about your children. Right now, Dad. Mom, you're off the hook today. Dad, I want you to think about your children. Are you spending enough time with your kids? Hmm? What about grandparents here today? Are you spending enough time with your grandkids? Hmm? Are you spending enough time with, with just letting them know that you love them? Are you spending enough time with them when, when they want you to do something and you say, well, we'll do it tomorrow? Maybe next week, maybe, maybe it'll be another day, maybe I'm just too busy right now. See, I've taught myself so many times that I'm just too busy again for different things that God wants me to do. And I need to slow down and back up and repent. I did repent the other night, Pastor. I did. I repented. I said, God, I, I, I'm not doing it. See, the thing about us as preachers and pastors, we get to preach to first before we bring the new law. And God, I had to be on my knees and cry to God and repent, especially after I watched this. 